Today I'm going to show you a really interesting technique that you can use in your PowerPoint presentations, which is creating a video menu in PowerPoint. Let's walk through an example of what a video menu in PowerPoint might look like. So right now I have three menu buttons at the top of the screen. And when I click on one of these buttons, it'll show a video. Hey everybody, this is a screencast to show how to update a syllabus if you need to. Now I'm going to click on another button. And this video is actually embedded from YouTube. The first video was a video that I had on my computer and I uploaded it into PowerPoint. The second video lives on YouTube on their servers and I embedded it into PowerPoint. Now embedded YouTube videos have certain limitations and we're gonna talk through those. And then the last video. Because I never want you to say that I never Rickrolled you so that just happened and now you can deal with it. Let's look behind the scenes and see how I put this together. Now before we get into the embedding videos and uploading videos portion, I want to draw your attention to that there are three slides right here instead of just two. On the first slide, I have my title slide and I have the buttons living off of the screen. And the second slide is a transitional slide where I put the buttons on the screen and I apply a morph transition. And that way it just kind of blends into the next slide. But you'll notice also that I have the slide advancing after zero seconds automatically. So it goes from this slide right to this slide. Now let's get to the video portion. What I'm going to do is click on the selection pane because I want to see the various elements. The elements that I have are three buttons and three videos. And you can see those highlighted on the side. And you can name the media whatever you want or set it to default, but I find it really helpful, especially in this interaction, to specifically label my buttons. Now I'm going to show you what's going on in terms of animations, and I'm going to turn on the animation pane. And this does get a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to talk you through this. Let me start by focusing on one of the videos, which is the syllabus video that I uploaded. Now to insert media, you'll click on insert, and you can click on video, it can either be an online video where you're gonna put the URL to the YouTube or Vimeo video, or you can upload it from your PC. In this case, I uploaded it from my PC. Now the animations that I have associated with this video are that when I click on this button, which is the trigger, I want the video to fade in and then start playing. But also, if the video is on the screen and I click on one of these other buttons, then I want this video to fade out as well. So I have a trigger that when the table of contents button is clicked, then this video is going to fade out. Likewise, when this other button is clicked, then the video will fade out. Now looking at all of the media, I can see that I have a trigger, which is the Rick Astley button that's labeled extra credit. When this button is clicked, then Online Media 8, which is the YouTube video, is going to fade out. If it's on screen, it's going to disappear, as will the Syllabus video. And then the Rick Astley video is going to fade in. And all of that will happen at the same time. Click the button one time, and all of these actions are going to happen simultaneously. And after the video has faded in and the other videos are out, then this Rick Astley video is going to start playing. So that's what those mean. And we'll walk through that in a little bit. And I did the same thing for the other buttons, the, the Zoom Table of Contents video button, which is that YouTube video button, is going to fade out Rick Astley, and the Syllabus video, it's going to fade in the YouTube video, and then it will start to play it. And the last thing I'll mention here is, if I click on this Rick Astley video, and then I go to Playback, I have the option to hide while not playing. So when I enter the slide, it's by default going to be hidden until I reveal it, until I click on that button and it reveals it. However, with the YouTube video, when you embed something from YouTube, you don't have a lot of the options. I can't trim the video, I can't fade it in and out, I can't hide it while it's not playing. And so that is why I have to go into the animation pane specifically, and as the slide starts, I have to put in an animation that that video will disappear immediately with previous as soon as the slide enters. And that way I can have the slide a clean slide without the video appearing on it. So let me delete these videos and we are going to start this from scratch and I am going to walk you through how to do this. So first of all, I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to video, and I'm going to search for that video on my PC. The video is called Updating Syllabus in Canvas, and I'm going to insert that, and I'll go ahead and shape it down, put it center, 
and I'll start with that. Now I'm going to insert my YouTube video. I'm going to put in the URL and insert that. I'll go ahead and reshape it so it's about the same size as the other video. They're different dimensions, so this one's going to fit a little bit differently. Now before I move on, what this is doing is it's taking a thumbnail from YouTube and I'm making it pretty large. And so you can see that there's a lot of pixelation and such in this video. I can go ahead and go to poster frame and choose a different image from my file. I happen to have the image and so I'm going to browse from the file and select that just so that I get something sharper. Now it's a high resolution thumbnail which I think looks better. You can also insert an image from the file and choose a stock image if you think that there's one that's appropriate. Lastly I'm going to go and insert my final video. I'll go ahead and shape this and center it. Great, now I have my three videos, and let's look at what's happening on the animation pane. All of these videos are set to play on click, on media click, but one is on top of the other, so we're going to have to do something about that. There's a second trigger that pauses it. If you click on the video, then it will pause it. Now it might be a good idea for me to go to the selection pane and update the names so that it's a little bit more clear. Okay, so now in my selection pane, I can see my assets, my videos, and then I can see my buttons as well. For now, I'm going to hide the table of contents and the Rickroll video, and I'm going to focus on the syllabus. If I double click on the syllabus, I can access the hidden video format and playback ribbons. For video format, I can put a drop shadow if I'd like, or I can add any kinds of borders. I can even change the shape of the video if I wanted something a little bit more creative. I'm not going to do that because I think videos are pretty standard in the equirectangular format. But I do want to add some animations. So let's hop over to the animation pane. First animation I'm going to have is I want this to fade in. So there's a fade in, and specifically, I want that to fade in when I click on the syllabus button. So I'm going to go find the syllabus button, and there you go, I've just created a trigger. When you press the button, the video fades in. I also want the video to play. And I'm going to pair that with clicking on the syllabus button. And I'm going to have that start after previous. So first it's going to fade in, and then it will start after previous. I'll go ahead and delete these other two triggers. Okay, now I'm going to do the exact same animations for the other two videos. Okay, let's look at what I have right now. So by default, I have the syllabus button, the syllabus video will fade in and play, table of contents, and Astley, the same thing. The issue we're going to have is that if I play the syllabus video and then I click on another button and play another video, the syllabus video is going to stay there. And so what I want to do is that when I click on the other button, the syllabus video needs to go away. And so let's focus on the syllabus. I'm going to add an animation and I want that to just disappear. You can have it fade out if you want, have the syllabus fade out while the other video fades in. For now, I'm just going to have it disappear completely. And I'm going to put that at the trigger of when you click the table of contents button. And then I'll change this setting so that it fades in, the table of contents video fades in at the same time that the syllabus video exits. Great, now I'm going to do that once more. I'm going to click on the syllabus video add one more disappear animation and this time I'm going to move that to the Rick Astley area and then I'll set the Rick Astley video to start as the syllabus exits. So for each video, I have three videos, I need it to fade out or I need, to, I need it to exit for the other two buttons. Now I'm going to do this with the other videos. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. So for every button that I have, the button is a trigger and it's going to make the other two videos disappear. Now that's only going to disappear if it's already on screen. For example, if I've clicked the video, I've, I've watched it, now I'm going to click this other button and there's a video on there, I want it to disappear. I want my video to fade in 
and then start playing. Now I have it start playing right as it's fading in. You can change that if you'd like to start on mouse click if you want a little bit more control. Now the only thing we want to address now is that this video from YouTube, I don't have a playback option to hide the video when it's not playing. And so I need to create that in the animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make that video disappear completely and I'm gonna have it disappear with previous. So as soon as I advance to this slide, automatically the table of contents video isn't there. And it's only going to appear if I click on the button. And if I click on any of the other buttons, that video will disappear. So that's one way that we can get around that option of hiding it when it's not playing. Let me just click on the video playback option to show you some of these other options. I'm not going to employ them in this video, but you have the ability to play the video and then you can set a bookmark. You can bookmark parts of the video. I can also trim the video. So this is an 18 second video. I can trim this down maybe to about four seconds or so if I wanted to. And then you can have it fade in and fade out. And what that's going to do is right now I have a thumbnail. When you fade in, then it'll transition from this thumbnail to the video. It'll kind of ease in. Let's look at what that might look like. 0.5 second, a half a second fade in. And then let's fade it out. I'll give it a one second fade out. And we'll play that and see what kind of effects that provides us. So it's not that great. This is kind of a grainy video. It's, you know, we, we're using what we have, but you can see the fade in and fade out effect. I also have an option that I can loop it until I stop it which would be sadistic for the purpose of Rick rolling, but there might be situations when you think that setting would be appropriate. Finally, I have an option to play full screen, which is only available for the videos that I upload into Canvas, not the videos that I embed from YouTube. If you want a YouTube video to play full screen, then you're gonna have to go in and actually adjust it to be the size of the full screen, which is completely optional. One last thing I'll mention are the buttons. In order to create these buttons, I went up over to shapes and I created a rounded rectangle shape. I kept the default color and font. Once I have my shape selected, I can type in the shape to put that text there. If I want, I can change the color of the shape and I can add other effects such as gradient options. I can put outlines if I wanted to and even shape effects such as drop shadows, if I'd like. You can play around with the buttons, move them around, and it's only a button if you say that it's a button. In this case, when I go to the animations tab, I set it as a trigger on click of, and that's why it's important to name the assets, the objects, and I specifically name the rectangles, the rounded rectangles, as stylus, table of content button, Astley button. You can name them whatever you want, but it's a good idea to really make that clear so that when you're setting a trigger on click of, it's very clear which object is a button. So let's get rid of that and play it from this slide and see what we have. Here's my menu. I'm gonna click on a video. I'll pause it right away, but I can see that it's gonna play. I'll click on my other video. And finally, click on my Rickroll. And here we have a fun way to create a video menu within PowerPoint. So have fun with this.